Good morning, New Covenant. My name is Austin. On behalf of the Praise Team and New Covenant Fellowship Church, we'd like to welcome you and just sing with us and have fun, put your hands together, and we invite you to just raise your hands, just give thanks for all the things that God has done for you throughout this week. So let's praise and rejoice under God. Come on, put your hands together.
much. I'm going to tell you why. He loved me first. In spite of me, he loved me still. How many of y'all love the Lord today? We're just going to sing about the goodness of God because he's so good. He's been good in my life. Every circumstance, every trial, every triumph, God is always there in the midst of it. He's so good to us all. You guys know this song. You can sing along with us. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so
you're never gonna let me down. No, you're never gonna let me down. You never you never gonna have let, and you never you're will. never gonna let me down. said, in the presence of God are his promises, his peace, his protection, and in his provision. We just sang a song about the goodness of God. And we have to rejoice because we know the little things that we've held on to, he's made something a lot bigger. And when I read that sticky note this week, God put it on my heart. I realized that everything, everything that I want in life is wrapped up in that statement. And it's in the presence of God because His promises, He gives me meaning in life. His peace, we all want peace in life. We need protection. We do everything we can for protection and provision. We slave ourselves to our jobs to provide. We do all those things, but yet he says in his presence, all that stuff is available to us. And there's a verse that followed, and I have to share this verse with you this morning. Because I believe that if we if we get this, and this changes our lives, God has something really great for our lives and our church. I'm suggesting that you go back and get a snapshot of that sticky note and put it on your refrigerator for the rest of your life. I'm serious because it will change your life. And here's the promise that I believe God has for us from 1 Corinthians 
But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which, not have which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. We simply can't um, imagine what God has for us if we stay in his presence. Do you see that? It's so powerful. So this morning as we prepare for the message to come, Start with this. Ask God to help you get all the little trinkets that we're holding on to out of your mind, whatever is holding us hostage this morning. And let's ask to be in his presence so that we can hear what he has for us this morning, okay? Let's pray that together. Heavenly Father, We could be here for eternity and we will be able to praise you for eternity, thanking you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Help us not to live only in the past. Help us not to only live in the present and not only in the future, but live in all of it because you inhabit all of it. And you are redeeming all of it. And I have, have not seen, ear, heard, or heart even understood what you're getting ready to do, what you're going to do with our past, what you're going to do with our present, and what you're going to do with our future. You are an infinite God, and we come to you as human beings that are so limited and so non-understanding of your power and your greatness. So Father, I pray that you will help us to open our minds to let you fill us with your presence so that we can begin to understand the greatness of your goodness, the greatness of your power, the greatness of your plans, the greatness of you. And it just be thrilled with you. Oh, Father, that's what we ultimately all desire. That's our purpose for being here. And you have it. You provide it. And you've honored us there by sending your son. You've blessed us by giving, sending your son so that we could have access to this promise. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We should never stop thanking you for what you've done and you're about to do. Give pastor wisdom this morning. He has a lot on his shoulders because you've given him something to say to us this morning. We are the sheep. He has been your shepherd that you have asked and you have put in charge of guiding us. That's a lot of weight. And I pray, Father, that you will speak to him this morning, give him peace and help us sheep to sit and listen and not worried about what food we're going to find in what pasture. But to know that our shepherd and our God, our provider, has already got wonderful things in store for us greater than we could ever imagine. And it's in your holy name we pray.
called our courage In the furnace of the fray The kind of daring expectation Every prayer I is on an empty kind of uh, feelings do you have for God? Is it puppy love infatuation? Or a real intimate love relation? Now, puppy love infatuation is what teenagers and some adults have. Many men who fell in love with a dimple made the mistake of marrying the whole woman. That's why Samson married his woman, a Philistine woman that he saw, he never said a word to her, he just saw her, and she was so beautiful that he went back home and told his mama and daddy, 
I want to marry that woman down there in the Philistine, that she's a Philistine woman. And they said, don't, don't we have enough in our own race that you can marry? Well, you want to marry, you know, this foreigner, some Philistines? I, I, I love her. No, he fell in love with a dimple. He didn't know her ways. Those who have puppy love get married and end up with a dog's life. <laughs> some of y'all know some folks like that, don't you? Oh, he's so nice. And your girlfriend said, he's a dog. <laughs> I wouldn't marry him. I, would, I wouldn't have him t t two feet in front of me. You need, to, you need to leave that. No, I love him. And then you call your girlfriend up. Six months later, girl, this dude, I don't know what. I told you he was a dog. What do dogs do? They do what dogs do. <laughs> Samson's Philistine wife dogged him into giving her the secret to the riddle that he had. It's been said, the honeymoon is that period of time between I do and you'd better. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. That's why y'all so quiet. I ain't been in your house. Ain't nobody talked to me from your house. So don't be looking at them. You, you, say, Did you? I ain't said nothing about what's going on in the house. But an intimate relationship is the result of real love. Real love comes after knowing a person's ways. Last week, we uh, studied Moses and, uh, and Ezekiel, and uh, Moses asked God, he says, God, I want you to show me your ways. Uh, his request came after God had threatened to remove his personal presence from Israel. But he, before he said that, he, because they had sinned, the, the children of Israel had sinned, but, but, but God told Moses, I'll tell you what, Moses, I'm going to kill all these people. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a great nation out of you. And Moses, no, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want that. No, no, look, look, God, you made a promise, and, uh, you know, you need to honor your promise. And so God was uh, listening to Moses, and Moses was talking on behalf of the promises that God had made. But he made a request after God had threatened to remove his personal presence from uh, the Israelites. But um, he would send an angel and then the people said, no, 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 whoa, 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 wait a minute. And Moses said, an angel? He didn't say the angel. He didn't say his angel. He said an angel. That could be anybody. And they said, no, we don't want an angel. Now, if you said the angel, we know it would be you coming, you know, in the presence of, of, of a, in, a, in, in the personal presence of, of another a being. And, but, but you said an angel. We don't even know what we're going to be getting. No, we want you. We, we, we want your presence to go with us. But God was going to punish them because they had done something crazy uh, with this golden calf. God had given them silver and gold. And they allowed the Israelites, I mean, the, the, the Egyptians, to, to just give it to them. They went and asked them, says, we want silver and we want gold. They said, oh, here, have it and get out of here. And so they gave them silver and gold, and then they made a golden calf out of it. And then they worshiped that golden calf. And then they credited the golden calf for getting them out of Egypt. Now, let me make something plain here, because a lot of people say, well, wait a minute. Now, uh, God's presence, he was going to leave. Well, God is omnipresent, so he really could not leave. His presence would always be somewhere because he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. So what God was saying, my glory will not be with you. Now, my presence will be with you, but my glory will not be with you. And I'll explain that as we go along. After being set free from the Egyptians, Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. 
They did so much evil that God would punish them for the evil that they had done. And uh, he gave them into the hands of the group called the Babylonians. So the Babylonians would hold them captive for over 70 years. And during that time, Ezekiel wrote about it in chapters 10 and 11. And during that time, God said, I am going to remove my presence from you. I'm going to remove my glory. My glory is going to depart out of the land of, of Jerusalem, out of the city of Jerusalem. My presence is going to leave Jerusalem. And it did, in fact, leave Jerusalem. And it passed over the Kidron Valley to the Mount of Olives. And Jerusalem would be devoid of God's blessings until his glory would return many years later. Now, in the Old, I mean, in the New Testament, Christ is the glory of God, and he ascended from the Mount of Olives in the New Testament, and then he promised that he would return back there. In the last verses of Ezekiel, uh, uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, a city was named after God, and the city was called Jehovah Shammah, meaning the Lord is there. So even though God's glory had departed, he was saying that I want y'all to name a city after me because I'm coming back. Yes, yes. And you will know that I am there. And he was there in Revelation. John saw the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, the Bible says. And so Jesus will inhabit that city when he returns to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. But God made a promise during those 70 years. He made a promise to the children of Israel, and this promise is in Jeremiah chapter 29 where he spoke to them during this particular time. He says, yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and the fortune tellers among you deceive you. Look, when y'all go into these little Chinese restaurants, <laughs> don't be putting nothing, no stock in those old fortune cookies. Ain't no truth in them cookies. Some of y'all look for those fortune cookies. What's, what's my fortune? I can tell you what your fortune is. Go and read Jeremiah 29. Because what, what Jeremiah 29 pictures, it pictures people who are not in their promised land. It pictures people who are, uh, who are living apart from God's promised land in heaven. And so what God is saying to us, he's, what God is saying to them, he's also saying to us. He says, do not listen to the dreams you encourage those false prophets to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. I don't know why you're listening to them. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That is for you and for me right now today. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. With all of your heart, then you will find me, says the Lord God Almighty. What is he saying to us? He's saying the same thing. The Bible says there are extraordinary blessings when God's presence is in our lives. You know what blessings they are? We feel protected. We feel peace. We are not only uh, protected and have peace, but we also have his provisions. And then we also have his promises fulfilled because we are seeking his face when we sin and God promises us that he will forgive us every time we do that and he promises to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But God promises his presence with us will be permanent and he makes that declaration in the New Testament. It's a promise that we can claim right down today. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, it says, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will 
I ever forsake you. So what is God saying to you and to me? I got to explain this verse to you because reading it on surface without the, he, without the, the, the Greek and, 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 and how it's constructed in sentences in this particular verse, you won't understand the literal meaning behind this verse. But in this verse, God promises us if we are satisfied with his presence, we will be content with what we have. See, what you have is God's presence permanently. And if you're not satisfied with him, you'll never be satisfied with any amount of money that you have in the bank. You won't be satisfied with anything until you're satisfied with Christ and satisfied with your relationship with God. If, you, if you're satisfied with who you have, which is God, then this promise is for you. Now, here's what he's saying. It's an emphatic double and triple future negative that emphasizes a, that, that emphasizes a positive promise. And I said, and as I looked at it, so what is it literally saying? It's literally saying, I will not, I will not. That's a double negative, but here is a promise. Cease to sustain and uphold you. Then he says triple promise. I will not, I will not, I will not let you down. He emphasizes that in a double promise, then a triple promise. He uses, his, he uses a, a double negative, then a triple negative to bring home the positive, which is I will never let you down so that you can confidently say that the Lord is my helper and because he's my helper, I know that I won't be abandoned. So what can mere man do to me? Answer is nothing. Why? Because the Lord is my promise, and he's always with me. So in the presence of God are his promises. In the presence of God are his provisions. In the presence of God is his promise, is his peace, and his protection. Now, God promised Moses his peace would be with him. And he said, I'm going to give my peace to you, and I'm also going to give the promised land to the people. But I'm not going with you. Now, I'll give you all, all that stuff because i got to keep my promise because I made it to Abraham and I made it to his children, but I'm leaving y'all. You are just so obstinate and, 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 and I'm not going to stay around you because I, I, may, I may kill you all. So let me show you what he says in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 1. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, You and the people you brought out of Egypt must leave this place. Go to the land I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with an oath saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send a messenger ahead of you. And I will force out the Canaanites, the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go to that land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not be with you because you are impossible to deal with. And I would destroy you on the way if I hung around with you. When the people heard this bad news, they acted as if someone had died. No one wore any jewelry. Now, some people take this thing out of context. Some people say, you know, because you're born again and you walk in sanctified, you ain't supposed to wear no jewelry. If y'all want to wear jewelry, y'all wear jewelry. Jewelry don't save you, and jewelry can't unsave you. I think my wife looks good in jewelry. That's why I buy it for her, so she can look good for me. But look, don't let some, 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 somebody tell you that in order to look righteous and holy that you ought not wear any jewelry. Then they went so far as say you ought not wear any makeup. Man, you ought to kill that dude who ever tell you all that. <laughs> look, you ain't going to get no closer to God because you don't wear no makeup. You may get farther away from some fellas that want to talk to you if you don't wear nothing. <laughs> he 
helpers, Lord. Look. God made man and God made some things that were inventions. And one of the things that he, had, that, that he allowed man to invent it was makeup. I mean, I love my, my wife with or without it because I love her ways. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, she ain't got to wear no makeup, you know, make me love her any more, any less. But you know, some of these people, they go too far to the left, too far to the right. Man, whatever God tells you to do, you do. Don't you do nothing that no doodah stands up in front of some pulpit tell you, don't y'all wear no makeup, don't y'all. Man, you better go get saved. Don't be telling my wife what she can't wear, what she can't do. It's before her master she stands or falls. And you ain't her master. That's what I'm talking about. Now, y'all can wear what y'all want to wear. You can come in with makeup, you can come in with out. I ain't looking at you no way. <laughs> Mama got me. <laughs> 30 years, man, 30 years. I don't want to be retrained and I ain't going to train nobody else. <laughs> Let me go back to the word. Y'all done got me off record. So we live by faith in the presence, in the promises, the peace and protection of God. When we live in that, we, 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 look, God said to these people, y'all don't understand who I am. And y'all won't, y'all won't follow me. So I'm just going to leave. I'm going to leave y'all with it. I ain't coming with y'all. And y'all just do whatever y'all want to do. God promised Moses that he was going to give him peace. And he also promised a promised land. People who live without God's presence live with a mindset based on scarcity because they never have enough. So they live life trusting in luck, but not in the Lord. They play the lottery and get mad because they lose. I'm thinking, you, you betting on luck. Do you not know what the odds are? Odds are against you. You do better getting struck by lightning. And by the way, have you get, got struck by lightning lately? No. Well, you're not going to win the lottery. That's how, that's how, I mean, there's many people. You do better doing what God tells you to do. And he says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. That's from the word of God. That's a promise from God. You can base your whole life on his promises. He promises in, in, in Malachi. He says, look, if you bring your tithes and your offerings into my storehouse, take care of me, take care of my servants, take care of the operation of the, operation of the church, you know, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. You ain't got to worry about no fortune cookies. You don't have to worry. Look, you don't have, you don't have to worry about playing a lottery. You just come and trust me, and I'll take care of all of your needs. Look, when God is your portion, there's always more than enough. The Bible says your cup will run over when the Lord is your shepherd. He says he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies when the Lord is your shepherd. He says, and your cup will run us over with blessings when the Lord is your shepherd. When God is your shepherd and you give him the five loaves and two fish and he needs to feed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, you put whatever you, ha whatever you have in his hands and God blesses it and there's always more than enough. There were 12 baskets left over to fill the mouths of his 12 disciples. You always have enough. And look, those folks that live by luck, they live like the woman who came to Jesus and says, look, can you give me some bread? And he says, you know, I don't give bread to people that don't belong to me. 
And she said, well, even the, the crumbs fall off the table. And the guy says, well, I'll give you some of the crumbs off this table, but you can't have none of this bread. This bread is for my people. Look, look, don't, I don't want the crumbs, and I don't want you to be wanting no crumbs. Crumbs come to those people who don't have a seat at the table. But because you are God's child, you have a seat at the table. Look, when David told Mephibosheth, he said, look, I made a covenant with your daddy. And because of your daddy, you don't have to worry about nothing. You come and eat at my table because I made a covenant with your daddy. Now, Christ made a covenant with his daddy so that we can come and sit at his table at any time. We don't get the crumbs. We give crumbs to those people that don't know God. But we don't eat no crumbs off of God's table. The God, the God that I serve, he's our portion. So Moses prayed for God's presence to remain because he wanted all of the portions that God and his presence provided. But Moses, he wanted a little bit more than that. Moses wanted to see God's glory. And he also wanted to know God's ways. In other words, God's intentions. Because Psalm 103 says, God made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. The word acts means works. God made known his marvelous works, his, his miraculous works. He, he parted the Red Sea. He delivered them out of Egypt. He, he gave them manna from heaven. He gave them rock, uh, water from a rock. All of these miraculous things that God did, but they didn't want to know God's ways. You know why? Because if, in order to know God's ways, you've got to fall in love with him. You've got to get past the surface you got to get deep. I'm still learning mama's ways, you know? And every day there's something new to learn about her. You don't know everything about everybody, you know, in those six months. How you going to know somebody? You can date them for 15 years and still don't know all their ways. Because as they get to know you and your ways, then they kind of compromise their ways in order to deal with your ways. Because that's how you have to live together when you got two ways coming together. We all got to compromise. You know, if you're not willing to compromise, you're not going to be living together for too long. That's why people get, get divorces. I'm, I can't. Irreconcilable differences. I know what it is. You want your way. They won't, don't want to compromise. That's why you're out there now living in your car. Because... <laughs> Mama, mama, mama kicked you out. <laughs> you, you didn't read the fine print. You thought that house was in your name. When mama found out what you was doing, she went and had that deed turned over into her name. Then she changed the locks on them doors. And when you came in, them, that, that key jumped back in your hand. And you said, what is this? Uh, you know, you tried to break down that door. And she said, I got the deed to the house. Dude ain't welcome here. They said, he, she got the deed to the house. You got to go. You better know, you better, you better know what you're getting before you, <laughs> you get tied up with somebody. <laughs> People took me, man. They fall in like this puppy love. I'm in love with you. <laughs> yeah. Moses loved God. <laughs> but he wanted to know more about God. He wanted to know God's ways. God used to speak to Moses face to face as a, as, as a, as a person. Man speaks to his friend. But God... But God, Moses wanted to know more about God. The Israelites, they didn't love God. They didn't love him. They didn't, they didn't love God with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul, with all their might. So they didn't obey God because they didn't love him. If you love somebody, man, you really love them, you compromise. If you don't love them, you don't. But Moses did love God, and he did obey God. 
Exodus says God used to speak to him face to face. And the word face to the word face here, let me let me give you a little, let me dig a little deeper. The word face in the verse of scripture is plural in the Hebrew. Plural in Hebrew means two or more. So if Moses was speaking to the face of God, he was speaking to the Godhead three in one. He was talking to the Trinity, but the face of the Trinity is who? Jesus Christ, because whenever God shows up, he shows up in his son. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 18. It says, no one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Well, who is that? Jesus. So Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So if you, when you see Jesus in the Scripture, you see the Father. You see everything that the Father is. You see the Father's ways. You see the, the, the Father's character. It's all in Jesus Christ. That's why I don't know. I mean, from Genesis to Revelation, you see the face of God. God is all through those pages, even in the Song of Solomon. You see God. You see a compassionate and merciful God and how he treats his bride. I mean, God is all through here. And people don't trust this book, but they go to the library and pull out a book of history and they believe what's in that book, but they won't believe the book that God wrote. I don't understand it. Do you understand? I, don't, I can't get that kind of stuff. But I know that God's face is on the page of every scripture in here. Moses, though, wanted God to make known his ways. He, he wanted a commitment from God. In other words, much like a, a, a woman who's been dating someone for years, but there's no ring on that third finger left hand. She said, wait a minute, how long are we going to go along like this? I mean, it's been four years. You ain't, you ain't got down, down on that knee yet. Put a, put a ring on it. Do I have to propose to you? <laughs> you know, some dudes, they string stuff along, man, because they, they don't want to make no commitment. You know why? Because they got a lot of chicks on the side. And see, that's what is, that was Israel's problem. They had a lot of gods on the side. So they didn't want to make a commitment to the God because to make a commitment to the God meant they'd have to give up all the other gods. So Moses interceded for the Israelites because Aaron had made a golden calf that they worshiped. But days before, when Moses was up on the up on the mountain, getting the Ten Commandments, the first ten. He got the first ten, came back down with the ten and the tablets, and he came down and he says, look, here's what God said. The first thing that's on the tablet is, you shall have no other gods beside me. And God then asked them to make a commitment Moses just read what God said. They said, what you say we will do. God never said that they had to say anything. But because they made a promise to do it, Moses said, okay. Well, then you've just made a promise. God's heard it. So then you are now bound by the promise that you've made. Dummies. They could have been operating with grace. But they said, I'm going to do what you say do. No, they weren't. They weren't going to do none of that. They still got into trouble even after they made those promises to God. Why? And, and you know, and, and, and it's, it's amazing to me. It was something else that I, and I saw in there. Uh, Moses, when Moses read the Ten Commandments and they told them, you know, they said, look, you speak for us. We don't want to get close to God and hear from him. We want you to speak to us for him because, you know, we may die. Well, why would they 
Why were they afraid of dying? Two reasons, I believe. Because they know that God don't play. Okay? And they also, know, they also knew that the wages of sin is death. Because they knew what happened to Adam. They knew death came after Adam. Because everybody knew that history. So they, and they knew that they were still sinning. So, no, 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 unless we die. But see, they didn't know the character of God. See, because the character of God is what God is going to show Moses, and I'll, and I'll show you that when we get to it. But they, the, the, why did they think that they would die? Because they didn't know God's ways. But Moses wanted to know. And so he interceded for them. And, he inter and his intercessory prayer relied on God's promise and also God's favor. Exodus chapter 33 and verse 12 it says, then Moses said to the Lord, see you say to me, bring up this people, but you yourself have not let me know whom you will send. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name. In other words, I know you personally, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor or grace, unmerited favor, in other words, in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you, you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this people, this nation, they're your people. Okay? I just let them out like you told me to. And he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? It is not by your, is it not by your going with us so that we and I and your people may be distinguished from all the other people who are upon the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken. For you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Now, let me park you just for a moment. Moses had found favor in God's sight. And God agreed to show Moses his ways. But Moses wanted a deeper understanding of who God was. Next verse, verse 18, it says, Then Moses said, I pray, uh, show me your glory. He said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you. That word goodness is important. And will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on the rock, and it will come about while my glory is passing by. Huh. Glory passing by. Goodness. Okay. Are those two connected? Let's see. That I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Okay. God's going to hide him in the cleft of the rock with his hand. And I thought, well, okay, what does that mean? And I said, wait a minute. Then he says, I'm going to have compassion on whom I'm going to have compassion. And I thought about that word. And I said, okay, God, what are you saying? God is saying, here's what I got. Lamentation says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. And so the word compassion is a deep love of a superior for an inferior. So what God was saying to Moses was, my compassion is going to pass by you. 
you are an inferior and I am your superior. He said, but I'm going to pass by you, but I got to hide you with my hand. And I said, well, what hand would God use to hide him? Well, he would have to use the right hand to hide him because to use the left hand meant that he was an enemy. The right hand always meant fellowship and friendship. And when Stephen was being stoned to death, he looked up into heaven and the Bible says he gazed intently into heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So now, I'm saying to myself, okay, okay, hold on, wait a minute. God hid Moses in the cleft of the rock. Well, who is this rock? And I thought about rock of ages. <laughs> cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. I believe God figuratively, he covered Moses with his right hand in, figuratively speaking, Christ. Because we're all hidden in Christ Jesus, and right now we can't behold all God's glory. But we are hidden in his Son so that God can place his glory in us. You say, oh, I heard that someone say that. God doesn't give his glory to any man. I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to debunk all that stuff. Just hang on with me. I'm going to put y'all in context. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the right hand is a symbol of peace and a place of honor. So where is Christ? At the right hand of God. Why would he use that? Because God wants us to know that we are in a right relationship with him because we are hidden in the rock who is Christ. So God passed by and proclaimed his name to Moses, a name to find a person's character in the Old Testament. And people who don't know God's character, they run from him when they sin instead of running to him when they sin because they don't know God's ways. They don't know who God is in his name. And so here is the character of the person from whom a lot of people ran from, and a lot of people are still running from. Maybe you're running from this God, like Adam and Eve did. Why did they run from God? Because they knew that they had lost their intimacy with God. They knew that God's presence was not in them anymore. Because back in the Old Testament, God's Spirit could inhabit and then God's spirit could leave. That's why David prayed, oh Lord, I pray that you, you would not remove your Holy Spirit from me because he saw God's spirit leave Saul, the king. So here's God's character. This is who you ought to run to and not run from. It says in Exodus chapter 34, in verse six, then the Lord passed by in front of Moses and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord God, compassionate. That's the first thing he comes up with. Yes, I want you to know I am a superior. You are an inferior, but I have mercy towards you. Compassionate removal of misery whenever you're in misery. And I'm gracious to you. Next, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and truth. Who keeps loving kindness for thousands? who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children, on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. Moses uh, made haste to bow low toward the earth, and he worshiped after God said all this to him. God is... Also a jealous God. 
In verse 14, he says, You shall not worship any other god, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Now, when we speak of jealousy, it's totally different from a human point of view. Because when we're jealous, man, we hot. So we'll be touching my woman. We'll be looking at my woman. We'll t- oh, yeah. Yeah, so we get jealous and we get, we get ignorant. Okay, we just, we, just, we, just, we, we, we just lose it. God is jealous for us. I want you to understand this. God is jealous for us because his relationship with us is so intimate. And he passionately loves us. And he knows that we'll be hurt if we trust any other God to provide for us. He knows that we would be hurt if, if we if, if we had, uh, 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 worshiping some 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 God to not only provide but protect us, he knows that no lowercase G God can, can can ever give us peace. He can't provide for us, and so God is jealous of His relationship with us because He passionately loves us, and He doesn't want us. He doesn't want us to go and play around with any of these other gods. He said, look, do you realize what I did for you? Can, can, I, can I tell you what, what God said to the Israelites when he had to bring them down to their knees? He said, let, let, let me take you back to where I found you. He said, I found you squirming in your blood crying out to be saved. You had been delivered, but nobody had cleaned you off. But I found you, and I cleaned you off, and I nurtured you, and I grew you up. And then when when it was time for love, I clothed you, and I loved you, and I married you. And now you want to play the desert on me? You want to go and let somebody else make love to you? After all I did for you, nobody else heard you crying, but I heard you crying. And I gave you birth, and I cleansed you up, and now you, yeah, no. God is saying, I passionately love you. And I know if you put your trust in anyone else but me, you're going to be hurt by it. And when you hurt, I hurt because I am in you. And you say, oh, wait a minute. We know the ways of God, not by infatuation, but by an intimate, by, by an intimate love relation. Which do you want? Infatuation or an intimate love relation? It's really up to you. Those who want an intimate love relation will be given the glory of God. Oh, wait a minute. I thought somebody said that God doesn't share his glory with anyone. Well, if you go back and read in chapter 17 of John, this is what Jesus said in that passage of Scripture. He said, he will give us the glory that the Father had given to him so that we will be perfect in them and in unity so that the world would know that God sent Jesus. So, God's glory is in us. The glory of God is Jesus Christ. So, the Spirit of God is in each one of our temples, and the glory of God will never depart. We don't have to worry about him calling us Ichabod. Because the glory of God will never depart because his glory is the seal that keeps us until the day of redemption. Jesus told Martha in John chapter 11, verse 40, he says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So if if you've been born again by the Spirit of God, The glory of God is what gave you a new birth, and the glory of God by the Spirit of God is in you. So you're walking around with God's glory on the inside. So if you have his glory, here's what I want to tell you. You got to be compassionate because you're carrying his name. You got to be gracious 
Because you're carrying his name. Because all of those, you got to be good to other people even when people are not good to you. Because it's by the goodness of God that God is glorified. So now, you got to be long-suffering. And you, you, you got to forgive people who sin because God's forgiven you. So if you want to show God's glory to other people, then operate with the character of God. Don't be walking around with your nose up in the air. You know, humble yourselves under God's mighty hand so God can use you to tell somebody else, show somebody else what God's like. Because you have a relationship with God, now you can show other people what God's like through you. So be compassionate. Be merciful. So you want the glory of God? You got to confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. He'll hide you in the cleft of the rock when he saves you. That's the rock of ages. That's the rock of his presence. So we are hidden in the rock of God's presence. Do you know what that is? That's, man, God hides you in his son. So whenever God looks at you, his right hand is covering you up so that all he sees is the glory of Christ. He doesn't see the sin that you committed yesterday or this morning on your way here or when you first got up this morning. No. He sees his son's glory emanating out of your presence because the glory of God is in you. I played a song this morning for my wife on uh, Power 94 and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, it, it, the gospel praise, and, 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 and uh, uh, power praise rather, and, um, and, and it was all the glory of his presence. We, your temple, give you reverence as your presence now fill this place. Folks, you can get up every morning and say, that song. Because that song is true for you. Because the glory of his presence is in you all the time. It cannot leave you. God says, I will not. I will not ever let you down. I will not. I will not. I will not cease to be with you. I will always be with you. So, As you wake up in the morning, I want you to think to yourself, God, thank you for your glory in me, who is the presence of God by your spirit. Thank you for your spirit being in me. At the name of Jesus, the Bible says, every knee will bow and confess him, Lord, to what? To the glory of the Father. Would you stand where you are? And I want you to glorify the Lord today. If you already know him, thank God already. But if you don't know him, I want you to glorify him now by receiving him into your life, into your temple today. If you don't have him, I want you to get him. Every head bow. Father, I pray right now for the one who is devoid of your glory. If you want to know Jesus Christ, confess him right now as Lord. Just pray this simple prayer. Lord, I am a sinner. I want to be saved. I believe Jesus is my Savior, and I receive him as my Savior. Now save me, Lord, and fill my temple with your Spirit so that I can cry out, Oh, the presence of his glory. It's filled this temple. And I, and I long for that warm embrace. Father, I thank you right now for those who have made that commitment. There's, in here, I pray that you would walk down the aisle and come down and let someone speak to you and talk to you further what it means to have the presence of God living in you. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for those who are here today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, we love you. 
And I ask now that you would bless the food that they prepared today, that pop pie waiting for somebody to eat it up. And, and I thank you for the hands that prepared it. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And everybody who has the presence of God on the inside, say amen. 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 God bless you. <laughs>